everyone, it's Maria and today I have another video related to psychology. So just to give you my background very quickly, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology last year in 2019 and I went to a university here in Lisbon, Portugal and then I went to the UK, I went to the University of Leeds and I did my Masters of Science in Organizational Psychology and I am now back in Portugal doing my second Masters degree. So I'm now doing a Masters in Clinical Psychology. I'm also a graduate member of the British Psychological Society and I'm also an occupational test user in ability and personality. So basically I can apply psychometric tests for selection, recruiting and training purposes. However, I want to mention that I'm not a psychologist yet, although I think that I already have a decent amount of academic experience in psychology so that's why I decided to make this video. If you guys are considering to study psychology at university, I hope you find this video helpful. If you are also studying psychology or a course related to psychology, I would love to hear your feedback, if you agree with my advice, if you have better advice. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'll be talking about today. And without further ado, let's just gonna get started. Okay, so I will start by mentioning that it is very important that you are prepared to study areas that you are not considering for your future career. So it doesn't matter if you want to do your master's in clinical psychology, social psychology, organizational psychology, educational psychology, neuropsychology, it doesn't matter. But this is not bad. Even though you might feel like, oh, I'm not really interested in this field at all, you will always learn stuff that it's important to know. And also the fact that you'll have to study several different areas in your course also means that it will help you to make the Decisions. I'll give you my example. So before I started my bachelor's of psychology, I was already sure. So I started my bachelor's and I was like, yeah, I want to work in the business field with psychology. I want organizational psychology, not clinical, not educational. I just want organizational. And then I think it was on my second year, I was like, hmm, clinical psychology is very interesting too. And I imagine myself working in the clinical field as well. So basically that's why I'm doing another master's degree. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't like organizational psychology anymore because I do, but I also like clinical. So basically right now I'm having classes at night so I can work. Okay, also be prepared to have a very introductory first year. So basically you'll have a lot of modules related to history of psychology, anthropology, introduction to social sciences, introduction to neuroscience. Do not assume that in your first year you will already learn how to deal with people, helping people on how to deal with certain emotions. Do, for example, organizational diagnosis because basically you will only learn how to do that in your master's so expect that your first year and your bachelor's degree in general will be very based on introductions because of course it is very important that you acquired all the bases so then you can go to your master's degree okay so there's another important thing to mention and I need you to listen to this so statistics are very 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 important by now, um, I don't even know how many statistics models I've had. I've had um, statistical analyses one, two, and three in my bachelor's, and then I think I had like two modules of research methods, and in my master's degree of organizational psychology, I had research methods and advanced behavioral research methods, and now in my master's of clinical psychology, I'm having research methods in clinical psychology. So as you can tell, you will need to do statistics, and SPSS will be your partner. So you will use SPSS in a lot of assignments and also in your dissertation, of course, so it is very important that you learn how to work with it but I'm pretty sure that your teachers will help you and also I'll leave down below two books that can be very very helpful so don't be scared and check down below however it is important to mention that the way that statistics are delivered might be very different from university to university so basically in my bachelor's even though we had to work with SPSS 
we didn't really use SPSS for assignments so basically in our assignments and exams we had to do everything without the computer just using our pencils but then in my master's of organizational psychology using the SPSS software was mandatory Okay, so another thing that I want to say is that you need to be independent. Of course, you can have study groups, but it is very important that you do your own research, that you find what you like because that will also help you to choose your area. So you need to be able to do your own readings, to analyze them, be critical. Because one thing that I noticed in my master's in the UK is that being critical is very, very important. Basically, if I try to compare studying psychology in Portugal and in the UK, I must say that it is very, very different. So basically, at least in my university in Portugal, when we had exams, we needed to study what teachers delivered to us on the classes. So basically, we could study only by the notes that we had from the class however you needed to know like very specific stuff that teachers wanted whereas in the UK I found it very very different and honestly to me it really encouraged me to study and to always try to research more so basically in my university in the UK when we had exams basically we had these topics to study and then on the exam we had to choose two topics so of course you would have to know all of those topics very well and what would give you a distinction mark would be the stuff that you mentioned and that it was not mentioned on classes. So at least in my university, teachers really, really, really encourage us to research, to do our own readings. So basically my exams were not only based on what we learned at classes, but also on the further readings that we did. So it is important that you know how to do that independently. And I will also really encourage you to attend conferences, attend workshops, webinars, just because your friends are not interested in the same areas and they don't Want to go to this certain workshop if you are interested go this is something that no one ever told me but i've learned this with the time in psychology if you want to have a good impact you need to be independent and you need to go further you need to do your research talk to professionals talk to your teachers ask questions it is important that you're curious that you're motivated driven because that will not only help you academically but also professionally okay so this is the last thing that i will be mentioning today However, this is still very, very important. So, it is very important that you allow yourself to be tired sometimes, to be sad, to admit your own weaknesses, because at the end of the day, you're still human. And you'll probably meet a lot of people in your life that will tell you, well, why are you sad? Uh, aren't you studying psychology? How do you expect to help others if sometimes you're sad too? And then there's the other type of comments that you'll probably hear that are like, um, oh, so you're studying psychology, can you read my mind? Or for example, oh, I need to be careful in everything I say because you might be analyzing it. Um, no. And then there's also another type of comments, um, comments from people that think that mental health is not important at all. There's no need to go to the psychologist. Um, people that will tell you that psychologists are not necessary because they give love advice to their friends, so their friends would never need to go to the psychologist. Um, I mean, there's issues related to so much more than that. and. And also sometimes people get kind of confused between um, coaching and psychology, which is not the same thing. Uh, each one of these has its own purposes, so it is not the same thing. But honestly, the best advice that I can give you when this type of stuff happens is for you to not get mad over this because people don't know and it's always better if we explain them rather than we get very frustrated because they don't understand. Because probably no one has ever explained to them so I think that talking about mental health is very important. So in case this type of stuff happens, use that opportunity to create some awareness and that will be a win-win situation. So this is all the advice that I have for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have further questions, please let me know. If you would like to see more videos related to psychology, let me know. I would totally love to film them. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.